We're joined here by Mr. J.J. Marsh, Mr. USA, Mr. Pro Ironman, IFBB professional, Olympia competitor, a whole slew of titles. We're going to find out how he gets these calves so big. Well, let's put some weight on the bar and let him show us. Okay, fellas, let's get busy here. <laughs> okay, the first exercise in our routine is standing calf raises. You notice that J.J. is keeping his knees perfectly straight, going all the way up, pausing at the top, getting a full contraction, coming down, getting a complete stretch. And like I said before, this is not the traditional standing calf raise right. machine. This is a Smith machine. We're improvising. Normally you'd use a block or a two-inch raise to get the stretch at the bottom. We're using a 45-pound plate. Great, J.J. Good. Here all the way up. Okay. All right. Good. Let it down. Okay. <laughs> Right. Okay, I'm right. going to do a slight variation of the calf raise. Let's just say, for example, you got lower back problems, you don't want the compression of the bar on your back, you can still work calves and work them very intensely by doing one-legged calf raises. Okay. I'm, going to use, I'm going to use a dumbbell as resistance here. Let me slide the plate forward to give me I some stretch. You. Okay, great. Sir. All right. Okay, now what, what Boyer is doing here is a variation of the standing calf raise with a dumbbell. Again, it's a little bit of improvising. You gotta try to use your mind to be creative if you haven't got the proper equipment. JJ, have you ever done the one-arm standing calf raise? Yes, I've tried those, and, and what it does is you get more isolation on the inner head of the calf, and you come up, so it really takes the weight off and the stress off your lower back by performing this exercise, God, so it works I, very well. I would imagine you can't use too much weight since you know, the dumbbell could be pretty heavy and your arm would come into play. Well, and you also have your whole body weight, you know, resting, uh, actually not resting, but uh, on that one leg as resistance as well. So it's better to use a lightweight, high repetition? I would say just a moderate weight and get the high repetition anywhere from 20 to 25 reps per set. Yeah, well, that's a lot. It works for you. I'm going to try it. Uh, Boyer, now, <coughs> if you haven't got something to stand on like this, what would you stand on? Well. You could literally use anything that would provide, uh, you know, like a two by four, anything that would provide some stretch. Okay, Sean's going back to the standing calf raise. Works for JJ, I'm going for it. That's right. Let's go, Sean. Okay, all the way up. Great. Again, we're going through a complete range of motion here, going up, getting a full contraction at the top, Speech going down, getting a full stretch at the bottom. Now, can I change my foot position? Yeah. yeah. If you, if you, why don't you try changing the like, well, working the inner head of the calf, so go in and Go in like with your heels together. Heels together. Right. Okay. So you notice that his toes are pointed slightly out. This catches the calf, the inside Works part inside of right the calf. Here. Yeah. Okay, now if I point my toes in, what do okay, I want? Okay, this is working the soleus, the outer part of the calf. This gives a nice sweep to the calf muscle. Great, all Ooh, the way. That looks good, Sean. It's burning. Great. Come on. I got a going. racket. I got a racket. <laughs> okay, here wait. Go. Just go. Great. Okay. <laughs> That's great. What's up That's next, JJ? Great. What do you do uh, as a ne next calf exercise? My next calf exercise, what I'll do is perform the seated calf. Okay. Calf raises here. Why don't you show us? What's some more weight for that first set? Yeah, let's grab another 45. Uh, 45, okay. Ah. Or it's adjustable, so what you want to try to do is just adjust it to your knee level so you get a real deep stretch. Okay, so it does, it, the importance of the weight, it does come into play. Correct. Now, you would use a heavier weight to build heavy, uh, bigger calves or lighter weight to get more detail? What I try to do is you, you go a little lighter weight, do uh, anywhere from 15 to 20 reps, holding and uh, pausing at the top when I'm performing this exercise. Now you notice he gets a contraction at the top, holds it for a second, really isolates it before he goes down and gets a full stretch. Again, this particular exercise, as you can see on JJ here, it's quite evident, it really isolates the soleus, the outer head of the calf muscle. JJ, if I were to spot you, would I spot you from here? Yeah, actually from the front. I was kind of slipping off of here, but here, let's go try this again. Okay, so I'd spot you from here. That would be perfect. Right. Great. All the way Can I help you good, on the way down? Good. No, let, the, let me take the resistance down. Just help me peak it at the top. Okay. So Great. you allow the resistance to pull you down really good to stretch at the bottom. I'm taking it down really slow. Good. Great, good job. Go on, right. jump on in there for you. Okay. All right. Before I start here, JJ, how often do you train calves in your training routine? How I many train, times a week? I'm training them every other day, so use them getting in like three days a week. We'll perform uh, one light day, one heavy day, and one uh, superset day where I perform three exercises at one time, really uh, burning, the ex burning the calves really well. Total number of sets? Doing a total number of sets would be like 12 sets total. Now, is there such thing as overtraining the calf? I, could, I wouldn't really say overtraining because indirectly they get worked you know, by just walking around. Yeah, so right. you really have to reach down and get a little deep a fire. So working every other day works out perfect for me. I notice he's doing the inner part because he's got his toes pointed out. Come on, boy. Good stretch. Let's get One it up. More. Come on. Come on out. Okay. Good right. job. 
Is there ever a point, when do you know you're using too much weight? Well, when you're not coming all the way up to the top and getting a full contraction, you know, or you get to the top and you're just letting the weight just slam you down and you That's can't control the weight going down, then you know you got too much weight on there. JJ, where should I position my feet? I mean, is it the ball of my foot that's on this pad? No, I usually go right on the tip, like on the toe, right off the big toe. The big toe. And really emphasize and rotating the weight and shifting the weight to the big toe. I feel so it I now. Could, yeah. So you can feel it right there. Yeah, JJ, come, you know, step right here. I think you really see how it's working on Sean's uh, outer it's, head of his calf here. Yeah, it's hitting right here really well. It's yeah. coming up and squeezing at the top. He's getting the full range of motion, so oh. it's working very well. Do you, uh, you spend any time stretching your calves too? Yes. How important do you think uh, that is? Oh, that's very important. Stretch, yeah. It's in between each set, what you should do is stretch so you can, you know, flush out the lactic acid and everything, get some more blood working in the area, and then perform the exercise again so it's not all tightened up and everything. So okay, let's get on the donkey calf right. Great. I'll go first. I'll tell right. you what, let's grab a plate here. <laughs> this is the hard part. <laughs> okay, I got it. All right. Okay. Climb on. Now this is an exercise I like particularly. Who's I've gonna? Seen, yeah, JJ. Give me resistance. Here. He's a little heavier than me. Okay. I've seen JJ in the magazines performing this sometimes with two people sitting on his back. And I guess the reason JJ is you want more resistance. Yeah, you want to get more resistance because this way, you know, the weight's right over the calves right there, so you're really hitting the calves quite well. Uh, besides, when you're doing standing calf raises, you got the whole body going into play. Right. You know, this is this is almost complementary to the seated calf because you got the calf the weight right over the calves. Now you don't want to lean too far forward on him, you want to sit just above his glutes, right? Right on his hips. That's correct, that way you keep the weight shifted right there. Good, it's, it's incredible how on, Boyer. separated Boyer's calves are for, Come on now. for his sides. You notice that Frank is doing leg extensions. This is the first exercise in a leg workout. It's not only essential for the quads, but it really serves to warm up the knees for the heavier leg work we're gonna do, like the leg presses and the leg blaster. Come on, Frank. You gotta excuse me. I've never been this close to an actual Mr. Oh. Olympia. This is a three-time Mr. Olympia. That's it. Something I hope to be one day. Oh. Come on. Good. My it's, turn. That's it. Hop in there. <laughs> I always make it a point to stretch after every set, and the one I like to do here is the one leg back stretch, I call it. Okay, you'll notice that Sean is going through a complete range of motion. Again, you can see the separation in the quads. This is essential for good leg development. You simply out, cannot Sean go without doing this exercise in the leg workout. That's All it. the way up. That's Two it. More. Complete contraction at the top. Come on. That's good. All the way. Oh, good set. All right, my boy. I get in a drilling and rush, you know, training with these kind of guys. I only see these guys in the magazine. I got a great opportunity here. So I hope you learned something. Frank, tell me about what's happening right here in your experience with leg extension. I've always done a lot of this. Uh, I remember in uh, 79 Olympia, I used to do 10 sets of this three times a week. And there's nothing better to bring out the separation in the frontal thigh. So this is more of a cutting exercise? Absolutely. You would use this, what, for warm-up and then progressively increase the weight? Right. Can you, get, can you get big thighs on this? If you use heavy weight, you can. But it's really important as a first movement for the thigh, thigh workout. All right. Let's Push him out, Boyer. That looks good. I'm pretty warmed up. Why don't we uh, oh, okay. wrap it? Let's move on to a heavier exercise. Uh, the granddaddy of them. One of the granddaddies. The big leg press over here. Okay. Uh, what I want to do is make, the, make the, the, the notation that this is a basic mass building exercise. Am I right, Frank? Yeah. Leg press is a, a real good move, and I do it a little bit differently than you guys. I do higher reps and lighter weights. Okay. Show yeah. us how. This is essential in any leg program because this catches the general overall musculature of the leg. Not only works the quads, but it also works the hamstrings and even the buttocks as well. Now, if you I know, was going to spot him, I'd spot them, what, from here or from here? Yeah, either way, in other words, from the post there or from the platform as well. But you notice Frank, again, is going all the way down. Complete range of motion is very important. Complete contraction, on, two complete more. extension. Two more. One. Yeah, come on, Great. two. Good, okay. rack it. I'm going to go a little heavier. Okay. All right, I'm training for mass and size. You know what I mean? Frank, when you were training for the Mr. Olympia, how much time did you devote to legs and say over another body part? It was about the same. I think uh, thigh workout took me about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah, legs are extremely, you know, essential. I mean, it's half of your body. Again, Sean is doing a little variation with, uh, with his feet. He's emphasizing, you know, the total quad area, going very deep. 
Great shot. Thighs are the biggest muscle down. group in the body, and you get quite an aerobic effect from this. You're really breathing hard after a set of high kind of work. Okay. You're going to burn, too. You're going to step on in there, boy. Now, my experience is uh, you can vary your foot position. What's the difference when you point your feet out like Boyer with the heels closed uh, as opposed to having the feet wide? Is there a big difference? Well, Boyer's working more sweep on his thigh with his toes pointed out like that. He's getting quite a bit of buttock work and even strengthens his hamstrings a lot on that movement. Now, I'm competing here in the 90s. I know you were competing in the 70s and the early 80s. Did you have this kind of machine when you started bodybuilding? We used a vertical leg press, which was basically the same thing, but it slid straight up and down. You see, you see them around still, but I think this is a superior movement. Yeah, I know that uh, you can add weight on the sides as well as on the top. I've seen guys in certain gyms doing the whole stack and then have yeah. people sitting on the top. Oh, that's too much for me, but you can put a lot of weight on this since it's such a flat angle. Is size really important, the most important thing uh, as far as creating the full leg development? I mean, is size that important? I think it's a combination, Sean. You know, you got to have it all. You got to have the shape of it. I'm kidding. I know I'm going to do a lot of squats. Uh, personally, I have no problems. I, so us I usually like to use a lot of weight when I squat. We're going to do a little variation today. Why don't you tell us about this, Frank? Well, this is the, a device I came up with a couple years ago. I call it the leg blaster, and uh, I squatted heavy for many years. Toward the end, I started getting knee and lower back injuries. This device enables you to squat and have your hands free. Certainly so you unique can, looking, isn't it? Yeah, you can hold it. on here to these handles and do sort of like a sissy squat where you lean back as you squat and you go rock bottom and then not quite all the way up. Right. You can see it really, really drops you into a very, very low position. Mm -hmm. He's working obviously just a quad that's isolating the quad, almost that? like a sissy squat. Do you feel that in your arms? I mean, you're no, doing I'm just leg holding on to with my arms. I don't want to pull myself up with my arms. They're just like hooks holding on. Do you normally do this like looking in front of a mirror? Yeah. Yes, he's going all the way down, rock bottom, coming up. So he's getting a really full range of motion, probably even deeper than you would if you did a barbell squat. Is this harder than barbell squats? It is. You have to use about half the weight. This is about 95 pounds, actually, but it feels like 200. Let me give it a try. OK. Uh, I'll spot you back here. Just slide into it. Huh? Right. Come this way, slide Pull back. straight back. Don't forget to hold on to the handles. Now, where are my feet? Step Position your feet. A little. Yeah, a little bit further. Now, tuck your hips. There. Go straight down. Straight yeah. down and back up. This Head is up. like a sissy squat. It just Good. totally isolates the quads. Oh, yeah. I feel Great. it. Great. Don't lock out. That's it. Right. Stop the pistol. Lock out. That's it. Just piston like up and yeah. down. That's, That's it. it. All the way. Feel Great. them burn. Oh, yeah. Good. Come on. Four more. Great. Okay. That's it. Two more. Oh, yeah. I feel it. Okay. Pull them out. Great. One more. All the way up. Good. <laughs> Uh, Great. It's... Made it look easy. Would you consider this heavy weight? I mean... Well, not really. But, you know, the most I ever went with this is 185. When you start using more weight, you find yourself leaning forward a little bit more. Somebody give me a spot. I mean, this is the first time I've ever tried this. So you just progressively work your way right. up. I like to go up maybe 20 pounds each set, starting with this weight. That's now, good. Boyer's doing a real sissy-type squat with his feet are way forward. Now, this isn't a replacement for actual barbell squats. This is an alternative. It's an alternative, but it is a replacement for me because I can't do the movement, period. There's it's a lot of people that come in, yeah, a lot of them come to me with back problems, This is problems. a good one for it. Okay, because there's other variations. There's uh, the Smith machine uh -huh. and the hack squats. This is, what's the title of this? Leg blaster. Leg blaster. I think this is the easiest of all because if you look at Boyer's knees, they are not going in front of his toes, and so they don't get compressed. Plus, his lower back is flat or leaning slightly back. Sure. So there's no compression in the lower back or the knees. Okay, now if you're going to spot, show me exactly how you would be. I would spot. spot right here. Right there on the bar. Okay. Well, normally I would start with squats, but being that I worked my legs the other day and they're kind of sore, I'm just going to take you through some shaping exercise today and more stretching here with lunges. Okay, well, let's get it. Well, this so is you definitely a variation of lunges. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, because you could use a barbell, but I'm using uh, different variations with the dumbbells. Oh, I see. It's just basically the same, other than you have your hands at your side. This probably works better because you got a lower center of gravity on uh, on the dumbbells there. I'm gonna join in and just try okay. to get it down. Now, is it better to do this looking into a mirror, JJ? Yes, it is. That way you keep your balance, but you want to try to keep the weight shifted over the front of the thigh. And you notice, really push back off the thigh here. You notice this as it going through the exercise is going from one leg to the next. Oh, yeah. You're alternating muscles. This not only catches the the quadriceps, the upper part of the frontal thigh area, but it also works the glutes very well. 
I That's notice what? you got to keep an equal balance with these weights so you can get off balance, huh? Yeah, because if you throw yourself off balance, it's easy to pull a groin muscle. How many would you do on the set? I normally do 15 reps. Per leg? Per leg. Well, are you guys going to let me get in there? Or you're going to have yes, all the we got three more. Set. Let's get three more. We're going to cheat each other. I'm it looks like both of y'all are doing a race and going nowhere. <laughs> One more. Okay, we're into our leg routine here with JJ Woo. and Sean trying to keep up. Okay, <laughs> my set. I feel it. You know, I would okay. definitely on this exercise have to wear straps. Okay, yeah, how many definitely. reps? How many reps? 15 reps uh, per leg. Try to keep the weight shifted over the front of the leg when you go down. Now, JJ, your legs back. look like they're about 60 inches around per thigh. Is this going to put size on your leg? This is more, like I said, a shaping exercise. It's really stretchy and give you more definition on the frontal head of the thigh. So in bodybuilding, there are exercises specifically for mass and specifically for shape. Yeah, and then this being one for shape, if you're looking for mass, you want to stick more to your, you know, your uh, predominant exercises like squats and leg presses. Right. So this is more, is this more of a pre-contest or you incorporate this year round? No, this is pretty much pre-contest just to bring out more definition and separation to the quads. Right. So it would mostly bring out the definition upper or lower? Well, it's really going to hit the upper. You know, that all depends on where you position your weight when you go down. If you try to keep the weight directly over the knee, you push back, you get more of the teardrop in the outer part of the thigh. I feel this in the glutes, too. I'm sure that would contribute to striated glutes as well. I would say so, because you're really getting that stretch and you're pushing off. So this is one you would really recommend for would, women for... Oh, for tight, for tight glutes, glutes. I definitely recommend this for women. Too. <laughs> definitely. Okay, let's okay. move on to your next exercise. Okay, what we're going to do today is what we call ballerina squats. You know, so what you want to do is really get a firm grip here. Let me grab some weight and show you. Yeah, here. grab some weight. Okay. Oh, this is the sissy squat? This is yes. the sissy front squat. This is considered a sissy front squat. Okay. Let's try to keep your feet pretty much just within shoulder distance and you go down. And try to keep the weight shifted over the knees and push back up in a straight position here. This might be called a sissy squat, but rest <laughs> assured there's nothing sissy about doing this movement. It looks you can kinda, see it really isolates the quads. It looks really like it's kind of awkward too. You know, because he's leaning back, yeah. putting all the pressure on his front thigh. Well, not, not only is it getting a good contraction, but as he goes down, it really stretches the quad. I see that, yeah. Great. And this is another exercise I imagine you can't use too much weight, obvious reasons. Well, obviously, because, I mean, even your body weight is working against you uh, in doing the exercise <laughs> on this routine. For legs, what I do for legs, a lot of people want to try variations of exercises, but what I found that works, works for me is doing just the basics, sticking to squats, and leg press to build mass and size. JJ, what's next? We're gonna do hanging leg curls, which is kind of unique and different. It hits you in very uh, different variations here. Oh, okay. Let's see it. Let's see it. There you go. Now this is definitely kind of a unique exercise, specifically for JJ Marsh. I've never seen this done, but I'm like I said, I'm getting all the secrets now. This, I guess we'd have to call this a JJ leg curl because I've never seen this done either. Well, what we're doing here is we're working the hamstring. You want to make sure that you don't swing. Keep a steady uh, range of motion. Sometimes you may need to incorporate some straps to keep your body weight up there. Okay. I'll jump in there next where. Right. Okay, I got it. JJ, talk me through this one. Okay, okay you got your hands wait, in a wait. good position right there. Try to keep your legs locked here so it really works. Okay, come all the way down, get a full range of motion there. Now you this can really, see how it's working. really contracts the muscle at the top because you're working against uh, gravity as well as having resistance. Keep yourself from swinging. Squeeze it up. That's it. Good. Good. Right, get a couple more. Come on. One Great. More. Right, one one more. more. One more. Good. Okay. Good job. There you go. It. Okay. Uh, All right. All right. Uh, here we go. Shot. JJ, I wanted to ask you what happens if the weight begins to slip out? You just let it go and just continue. Well, it's, okay, it's give good me the to way. perform this exercise with a partner so he can adjust the weight if it starts sliding down. So on occasion, have you ever incorporated drop sets where you go from a 50 to a 40 to a 30 pound Which number? is good because you want to start heavy and then drop down to a lighter weight. See, okay. as the weight starts to slip here, I'm going to try to adjust it here for him. There you so go. you Come need forward. basically a, a workout partner for this to exercise. perform this exercise, yeah, because there's no way you can put it in there and hang at the same time. Okay, I got it. Good. Good. Okay. We're out of there. That's oh, great. You really feel that. Good That's information. Amazing. What would you do next for your leg bicep? Okay, what I'm going to do now is stiff leg deadlifts over okay. here. But this is one that most, more and more bodybuilders, male and female alike, are getting into. Yeah, because what it really does, it really gives you a good stretch on the hamstrings and tighten up the glutes. Now, you can do this performed on a bench, on a block, but what we have here is 245-pound plates. Right. Okay. Now, I notice he's using a relatively lightweight just to start. Right. Is that for, to make sure that the muscle is fully stretched? Okay. Well, this is more of a, a stretching movement. Notice he's keeping his legs perfectly straight. He's increasing his range of motion by standing on an elevation, like in this case, uh, 245 pound plates. This is an exercise 
that you want, don't, do not want to use any momentum in. You want a slow movement through the entire range of motion here. Do it very strict. I also notice that when he comes up, he's squeezing his glutes. Right, this affects not only the hamstrings, but the glutes as well. So you want to squeeze at the top and just totally relax on the way down and right. get the full stretch. You notice also, too, that he wasn't leaning back. He's staying, keeping the lower back out of it, just working the hamstrings. JJ, come, uh, come around on this side here. I think you can get a better shot of how it's isolating Sean's uh, hamstrings that way. Okay, really That's squeeze it. on the glutes when you come up, Sean. All the way okay. up. There you go. Great. So am I kind of throwing my hips forward just a little bit? Yeah, or? you want to thrust forward just a little bit so you get a really good contraction on the glutes. Yeah, I feel it. Now, do you always do this with your knees completely straight, or sometimes you, you do them with the knees bent? What's uh, the best if, method? If I go with a little heavier weight, I'll break the knees. That way I can get a better pull on the hamstrings. If the weight's fairly light, you can't hyperextend and keep the knees okay. locked. Now, JJ, I've seen you doing three and sometimes four plates on this for good, solid repetitions. Is the weight very important? The weight is very important, you know, but the main thing is keeping exercise is correct strict form so you know you don't want to lose form by going heavy weight you know just want to keep a little good form now I know you train out in the desert out in Phoenix Arizona so it's got to get pretty hot in there and how do you keep your strength up for those exercises like well see this? the thing about it is I mean the gyms the weather out there is like 120 at some time but you know all the gyms that I train in are pretty much air conditioned and stuff like that good. you know so you, you keep your pretty your intensity level up pretty well good sweat okay let's, let's move on to the last exercise okay, okay. You want to hand it yeah, to I'll hand it to you. Now, what JJ's getting ready to do is a variation of the leg curl, except we're using a dumbbell. JJ, why a dumbbell? Up here on the ankles here. Okay. Okay. Oh, so right there. You got it. Why a dumbbell, JJ? Okay, let me see. There it is, right there. Good. Okay, there, right, there it is. Now I see how he's, that's going to yeah. be. That's a real tricky exercise. I've seen JJ doing this in the gym. He used to train out where I was at, out in California, but uh. I've never done this action. I'm going to find out as soon as he gets up off his machine. This is a new one on me, too. I'm almost afraid to try it's it here, exactly, but it really looks it's good. It's the same motion as a machine. Only difference is you're using your feet to maintain control of the weight. Come on, JJ. All the way. Definitely Great. takes a lot more greater concentration on this exercise. Yeah, it's almost like a concentration good. curl for uh, the five biceps. Let me give it a try. Yeah, when you're doing these, I mean, you really, you really feel the pull. Yeah. You know, it's different than on the machine. Now, he's never done this before, so what caution, precaution should he take? Try to keep your feet real tight together okay. and bring it up slow. Don't drop the weight too low or it will slip out. we got a couple of more minutes left. About two or three more minutes, and our 30 minutes are up. I'm going to do a couple more reps. Take us okay. out of here. Okay, you're on. Okay. Come on. Bring it home. One, two, three. <sighs>